Okay, welcome everybody to Hot Topics. As you can see on the screen behind me, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about this topic. God isn't fair. Have you ever heard somebody make that statement about God? You're all <laughs> nodding your heads, right? You hear that all the time. God isn't fair. You know what? They're right. God is not fair as people define fairness. People want a God who will grade on a curve. People want a God who will let sins, sins kind of just slide by. People want a God who exists to serve them, bless them, and give them all of their desires. And if they don't get it, you know what they say about God? God isn't fair. Again, I say, they're right. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say that God is, you know, is or isn't fair as compared to how humans define fairness. Interesting. People will hold human judges to an even higher standard than they hold the eternal judge God. If a human judge gets a little, you know, loosey-goosey with the law, and somebody doesn't get a fair judgment, oh, people will go to the press, they'll go out and protest. Yet, when it comes to God, the eternal judge, they don't want God to be just. They want God to be loosey-goosey with the law. They want God to be, quote, fair, unfair, as they define fairness. Again, God allowing them to get away with whatever they want to get away with. Scripture, no word says that God is fair, but Scripture everywhere says that God is just. Let's take a look at some examples of that. Go to Ezekiel chapter 18. And again, when we're talking about the fairness of God, uh, I want to emphasize uh, fair as how humans describe fairness, which <laughs> is very subjective, right? But Scripture declares that God is just. And it's interesting, again, people don't like that. And here in Ezekiel 18, starting in verse 3, God said to the people, As I live, declares the Lord God, you are surely not going to use this proverb in Israel anymore. Uh, the people in Israel were basically saying God wasn't fair for condemning them, judging them. They said, God, that's not fair. Why? Because they said they could not help sinning against God because they inherited from their parents and grandparents that attitude. God, it's not our fault. You're not being fair, God. We can't help to act the way we are. It's not fair that you judge us because we've been poisoned by our parents and great parents, grandparents and great grandparents. In fact, the proverb that they were using as their excuse is. In verse 1, when God said through Ezekiel, the prophet, the, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, what do you mean by using this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Saying, the fathers eat the sour grapes, but the children's teeth 
are set on edge. It's not fair, God, that we're experiencing the consequences of what our parents did. And with that understanding of the context, verse 3, God said, As I live, you're surely not going to use this proverb in Israel anymore. Why? Verse 4, God said, Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine. And God said, the soul who sins will die. In other words, God was not going to allow the people of Israel to make the excuse, well, God, we're sinning, but it's really not our fault. That's been passed down to us from our parents and grandparents. God says, no, no, no. Every soul is accountable before God. And God says, the soul that sins will die. God is infinitely perfect and holy in his justice. There's no wishy-washiness with God. God has a holy standard for the people he created. And God says that standard is perfect obedience to him. And any soul and every soul that falls short of that standard, God as the just judge says, the punishment is what? Death. And there's no excuse. Like people today try to make, interestingly, the same excuse that the people back in Ezekiel 18 were making. People today in our culture say, well, I can't help, whatever, whatever, because, you know, I'm a victim of what happened to my parents or grandparents. Really? No. Every individual is held accountable before God. Hop over to verse 23. God said, do I have any pleasure in the death of the wicked? Rather, God says he would like that a person would turn from his ways and live. But look how the people responded. Verse 29. The house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not what? Right. God isn't fair. How about that one? In other words, what the people were saying? No, 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 God. We don't like your standards. We're not going to live according to your standards. And you know what, God? We're not going to change our ways. Because God, it's your ways that are not good. God, you're not fair. God said to them, uh, really? Are my ways not right? O house of Israel? God then said to them, no. Is it not your ways that are not right? Verse 30, God said, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. 
each according to, notice, his conduct. God wasn't going to judge the individual based upon what that individual's parents or grandparents or great-grandparents did. No, no, God was judging them individually. In like manner, God was saying to the Israelites who were making the excuse, God, you're not fair. And God, by the way, we can't help acting the way we do because this has been passed down to us from our forefathers. God says, no, no, no. I will judge you each according to his conduct, declares the Lord God. And then we'll look what God said to them. Repent and turn away from all your transgressions so that iniquity may not become a stumbling block to you. Cast away from you all your transgressions which you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord God. Therefore, repent and live. God said, the soul who sins will die. That is God's just standard. That is God's just, perfect, holy, righteous standard. And again, he doesn't grade on the curve. It's very clear, right? No excuses. See, when people say God isn't fair, they are basically saying they don't like God's just standards. They want God to bend, to compromise, to let things slide so they can do whatever they want to do. Again, as I said earlier, when it comes to a human judge, oh, they want to hold a human judge to the highest standard especially if it's their life or the lives of their loved ones hanging in the balance before that human judge. And if that human judge in any way bends the law and renders a verdict that goes against the accused, oh, everybody explodes. And they should. Yet when it comes to God, They want God to be fair. Fair to them? Not just. Fair to them? Not God. God says, uh uh, the soul that sins shall die. Hop over to Luke 13. This is, you see Jesus saying the same thing. Uh, again, you know, some people will say, well, that's the God of the Old Testament. He was this mean, you know, a uh, uh, divine ogre in the Old Testament. But Jesus in the New Testament, he is just so full of mercy and love. Let's see what Jesus says in Luke 13. Starting in verse 1, now, on the same occasion, there were some present who reported to him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Wow. People were slaughtered, and Pilate took their blood and mixed with the sacrifices. This caused an uproar amongst the people. It's not fair. Look what Jesus said. Verse 2. Do you suppose that these Galileans who had been slaughtered 
were greater sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered this fate? In other words, um, you, you think you're better because you haven't died? Look what Jesus says. Verse 3, I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you're going to suffer the same fate that they did. Maybe you won't be slaughtered by Pilate and have your blood mixed with sacrifice, but guess what? Unless you repent, you will likewise perish. Or do you suppose, verse 4, that those 18 on whom the tower of Siloam fell and killed them were worse culprits than all the men who live in Jerusalem? Jesus says, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Do you see the parallel between what God said in Ezekiel 18 and what our Lord said here in Luke 13? The soul that sins will what? Die. Therefore, repent. God is very clear. Those who do not meet his just, perfect, righteous standard will perish. Doesn't matter your socioeconomic status, it doesn't matter which country you come from, which language you speak, how old you are, right? It's a very clear standard. But again, people will say, that's not fair. Well, why is it not fair? Who's the creator? God is. Who's the judge? God is. Who is perfectly omniscient, sovereign, holy? God is. We exist because of him. We exist for him. Do we think that God doesn't have the right to set his own standard? To set his own laws? Do we think that God doesn't have the right to declare? If you keep my standards, I will bless you. If you don't keep my standards, I will punish you. That's not fair. Well, what should God do then? Ignore his perfect laws? Ignore his perfect standards? Let things slide? Compromise who he is and how he is? Friends, if he does that, you have a different God. And then you have no idea how you can be accepted by him because his standards change all the time. Right? Then, <laughs> if you're punished for something, because uh, one day the standard wasn't that, now all of a sudden the next day it is, and you're going, wait a second, that's not fair. Yesterday you had a certain standard, today it's a different standard. Then you could claim God isn't fair, right? God's standard is crystal clear. And God's standard does not change because God doesn't change. Again, God is perfectly just. The soul that sins will die. And here's the problem. Romans chapter 3. Look what else God says about all of humanity, starting in verse 10, quoting from Psalm 14. As it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. There's none who understands. There's none who seeks for God. 
all have turned aside. Together they have become useless. There is none who does good. There is not even one. But God needs to ignore this universal rebellion against him, right? God needs to just let human rebels get a free pass. Uh, staying in chapter 3, verse 23, look what God says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Well, According to God's just standard, what must happen to all who fall short of the glory of God? <laughs> Let me show you in the scripture, Tim. I don't know if you guys can see Tim. He's like, <laughs> he's like cutting off the neck. Go to chapter 6, verse 23. What should happen? God makes it very clear. Verse 23, part A. The wages of sin. Notice one sin is what? Death. Didn't God say that in Ezekiel 18? Didn't Jesus say that in Luke 13? We see that again written here in Romans. The wages of sin is death. Friends, you do not want God to give you what you deserve. Would you agree with that? Because what do we all, you, me, and everybody deserve? Because there's none righteous, not even one. There's not one who does good according to God's perfect standard. Not one. All have fallen short. All have failed to bring glory to God. What do all of us deserve from God? Death. Right? Because he's just. But look at the rest of this verse. But the free gift of God is what? Not eternal damnation, but eternal life. How? In Christ Jesus our Lord. You might want to write down these two words in your Bible there in verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. Why don't you put somewhere right there the word justice? And then the second part of this verse, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why don't you write down the word mercy? Let me ask you a question. Does, do we deserve God's justice? Look at the beginning of the verse. Yeah, you all agree? Is God being unfair by punishing the soul that sins with death? Not being unfair. That's justice. That is God simply giving to us what we deserve. Justice. Second part of the verse. Yet, he extends and grants mercy, not to everyone, but to some. Mercy. Not giving us what we deserve. 
giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy, forgiveness, compassion, the gift of saving grace in Christ Jesus. Do you see it? God sovereignly chooses to give mercy to some. What do you think people say? God isn't fair. Really? So you want God to treat everybody equally? Okay? Then what happens to all of us? Damnation. Right? It's God's justice. But you need to understand something. God doesn't treat all men equally. Because God gives mercy to some. God gives to some what they don't deserve. If God treats everybody equally, that means everybody gets what they deserve. Justice. But God in His grace gives mercy to some, the elect. The rest get what they deserve. The rest go the way they want to. Running from God, not wanting to repent. Understand something. And by the way, we're going to make this a two-part series. Tonight's part one. Just want to kind of lay the foundation of this idea of God's fairness and He's unfair and all that. I really wanted to introduce the two key words, God's justice and God's mercy. And next week in part two, we'll talk about uh, the doctrine of election, where again, God gives mercy to some, but not to everybody. And guess what? Many in the church stand up and scream, God isn't fair. Right? So tonight we kind of took a look at what non-believers say about God. God's not fair. And we kind of defined what their definition of fairness was. And we took a look at what God's definition of his true justice was. Next week, we're going to come into the church and talk about how people scream that God isn't fair because he doesn't give mercy to everybody. As I conclude, you need to understand everybody deserves justice. God's righteous justice. Everybody sins, and therefore every soul deserves God's just judgment, eternal damnation. Everybody. Yet, God chooses to give mercy something they don't deserve to some. And he passes over the rest. Letting them go the way they want to go.
the saved, the elect, get mercy, which they don't deserve. The non-elect, the unsaved, get justice, which they deserve. God is not under obligation to grant mercy to anyone. And Christian, you are a recipient of God's unmerited, undeserved mercy. If God were to give you what you deserve, eternal damnation. Instead, God has given you what you don't deserve. His marvelous mercy. The free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What should your response be? Praise God. Amen.